Hey guys, and welcome back. My name's Hamish, and today I'm going to be running through some of the basic transmitter settings that are commonly found on hobby grade radios. Understanding what these settings do will help you get the best performance out of your RC car. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating on a FlySky GT2, but these settings will apply to nearly all hobby grade transmitters. So let's start with the steering trim. On this transmitter, the steering trim is adjusted by the dial on the far left hand side and is labelled ST trim. This setting allows you to set the neutral position for channel 1, which is your steering servo. I like to think of the steering trim as a way to set the wheel alignment. So use it to get your car to track in a straight line and help prevent it from pulling to one side. A quick tip for setting your steering trim. I personally find it's best to make minor steering trim adjustments while driving on a smooth flat surface at a low speed. Also, if you set the steering trim all the way to one side and the car still isn't driving in a straight line and wants to veer off, you may need to reset the position of the steering servo horn. To do this, start by removing the servo screw and then the servo horn. Make sure the wheels are straight and that the steering trim is centered before reinstalling the horn. Next, let's look at the throttle trim. Located in the middle and labeled TH trim, this dial performs the same adjustment as the steering trim, but for channel two, or the throttle channel. Now, if you own a petrol powered RC car, you may need to adjust the throttle trim to help set up the throttle and brake linkages correctly. On the other hand, if you own an electric RC car, you shouldn't ever need to adjust the throttle trim as the electronic speed controller, also known as an ESC, is calibrated to the factory trim position. A quick tip for those of you with electric RC cars, if you accidentally knock the throttle trim and adjust it from the factory position, your electronic speed controller might not arm up, or you might be experiencing some trouble getting it to go into reverse. This is due to the trim not being in the factory position where the ESC was originally calibrated. Almost all electronic speed controls require a neutral signal before arming up. Now, this is a built-in safety feature which prevents the car from running off due to the throttle being held on or the trim being adjusted from the factory position. If your car has steering but no throttle, it might be worth checking to make sure the throttle trim is set in the neutral position. Now, the dial on the far right adjusts the dual rates and is labelled DR. Dual rates adjust the amount of throw the steering servo has. This is handy to help prevent overworking your steering servo and steering linkages. For example, almost all hobby grade servos have 120 degrees of travel. So that's 60 degrees right and 60 degrees left. But not all steering assemblies require that much travel to attain full steering lock. To prevent unnecessarily stressing your steering components and overloading your steering servo, you can adjust the dual rates so that the servo only travels as far as needed to attain full steering lock. I find it's best to turn the transmitter steering wheel all the way to one side and then slowly adjust the dual rates until you notice the wheels start to move. You will also notice it starts to restrict the amount of steering lock the car has. The idea here is to allow full steering lock without overloading the steering servo and overworking other steering components. It's worth noting that if you set the dual rates all the way down to zero, you will completely lose all steering. So if your steering servo isn't working, it's always worth checking to make sure that you haven't accidentally adjusted the dual rates down to zero. You'd be surprised how common this is. Now, let's move on to the channel reverse switches, which are located just above the three dials. These two switches reverse the signal to both the steering, channel one, and the throttle, channel two. For example, if I turn the transmitter steering wheel anti-clockwise, the car will turn left. However, if I reverse the ST switch, while holding the transmitter in the same anti-clockwise position, the car will now turn right. The same goes for the throttle channel. One last tip, if you're like me and struggle to remember which channel does what, just remember, it's one to turn and two to burn. So that's channel one for your steering servo and channel two for either your throttle servo or electronic speed controller. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and be sure to like and subscribe to get notified on our upcoming videos.